Hello, we are back. This is lecture number three, I believe. So we're moving right along. Uh, thank you for being here today, for you folks watching at home, and for you folks here face to face. I'm slowly getting over my cold, so for uh, thank you for the uh, flowers and the get well cards that have been sent my way. Uh, I will pull through this thing, and I do appreciate your, your well wishes. For you folks at home, what we just did here uh, for the face to facers was we just took a quiz. And obviously, I can't give you the quiz at home. The quiz that I gave, why don't you show it on the screen? And if you're at home, uh, why don't you just pause it and see how you would do on this quiz? Just pause it, and when you're done taking that quiz, so to speak, just start it up again. You can go over the answers. So we will go over the answers right now. Okay? So let's switch over, and I'll just. What is the accounting equation? Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity or equity, right? Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And that always has to remain in balance. For a company at any given point in time, the assets have to equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity. What makes equity increase? Investments of assets by the owner into the business and revenue, right? Investments of assets by the owner into the business and revenue are the two things that cause the owner's equity to increase. The two things that cause it to decrease are just the flip sides of that. Withdrawals of assets by the owner out of the business and expenses. Okay? So I want you to have that, those facts real firmly cemented into your brains because it's going to help us, and especially today. Okay? Well, this is a really important lecture, so I'm glad you're watching it. All right, one thing I want to remind you all of, and especially for you folks at home, but even for you face to facers, is you can always re watch these. Okay? I know you loved them the first time, the second time they're even better, right? So if you're ever struggling with a concept, sometimes if you watch it a second time, it's going to become a lot more clear. Okay? So don't hesitate to do that. That's one of the real benefits of teaching in this sort of manner. All right. Uh, before we go over the homework, I want to clarify something real quick. I'm going to try to change my verbiage a little bit so that it's not as confusing. Um, the connect, the connect assignments, how many people have signed up on connect? Okay, Most of you, there's a couple that still haven't, we talked about that before class. At home, I want you to sign up for connect and again go to the lessons tab. Uh, or go, go to the Lessons tab on Angel, and you should see something there that refers to uh, the URL and the information for Homework Connect. Uh, but I want to start not calling it Connect Homework. I'm going to try my best, and you can correct me. I want to call it the Connect Assignments, okay? So when I talk about you need to do your Connect Assignment, I'm not going to say Connect Homework. I'm going to really try not to do that. I'm going to say Connect Assignments. Because the homework is like what I assign at the end of the hour or the end of the lecture each time and then we go over it like we're getting ready to do. So I don't want you getting confused. You see what I'm saying? So when I talk about doing the homework, that's what I assign. I usually put it up on the screen right before you leave. You do it. Pencil and paper. Textbook. Use your work papers perhaps in the back of your book. And then we go over it. That's the homework. Connect assignments are something totally separate and we actually do not go over the connect assignments in class they give you feedback on the computer. Make sense? Okay. Let's go over the homework that I assigned. I don't think it was real uh, mind-blowing homework, was it? So let's go over it. Quick study 1-8. Boy, that was a toughie, wasn't it? Did you pull an all-nighter on that one? Okay, we know that assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So for company 1 on quick study 1-8 on page 31, what do liabilities equal? $10,000. On company two, what do assets equal? $80,000. Company three, what does equity equal? Also $80,000, correct? Okay, good. Quick study one seven. Total assets of Caldwell Company, Caldwell company equal $40,000 and its equity is $10,000. So what's its liabilities? 
$30,000. Again, asset test equal liabilities plus owner's equity. B, total assets of Waterworld equal $55,000 and its liability and equity amounts are equal to each other. So how much are its liabilities? $27,500. How much is its equity? $27,500. Same. All right? So any, two qu any questions on those two? Okay, I think the other one I gave you was exercise 1-7. Is that correct? And this is in regards to the different uh, types of ways you can organize your business. So they want us to determine from the description if it's a sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. And when I read these, I'll emphasize in the, in the phrasing what the giveaway was for what type of organization it is. A1 pays its own income taxes and has two owners. It's a corporation. Corporation pays its own income taxes. B, ownership of Zeller Company is divided into a thousand shares of stock. It is a corporation. Corporations have stock. We didn't talk about that, but it was in your book, so I want you to be reading your book as well. C, Waldron is owned by Mary Malone, and she is personally liable for the company's debts. Sole proprietorship. One owner, she's personally liable, sole proprietorship. D, Micah Douglas and Nathan Logan own financial services, a financial services provider. Neither Douglas nor Logan has personal responsibility for the debts of financial services. It's a corporation. They're not personally liable. E, Bailey and Kay own Squeaky Clean, a cleaning service. Both are personally liable for the debts of the business. So there's two owners, they're personally liable, partnership. Good. But D, would you, would you have accepted partnership limited liability company? Uh, That's what I wrote, LLC. Well, LLC wasn't really a, an option. So it was just sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. So um, if you had to choose one of those three, there was only one right answer. But I think, you, but you are correct for D, LLC uh, would, would satisfy that as well if that were an option. Okay, good. Uh, are we on F? Okay. Plasto Products does not pay income taxes and has one owner, sole proprietorship. And G, I'm not sure why they call it Ian LLC, but uh, this company does not have separate legal existence apart from the one person who owns it. It's a sole proprietorship. It's kind of a little misleading with the name of the company, but it is a sole proprietorship. Okay? All right. Any questions on that? Any questions on that? Okay. Great. All right. What I want to do now, I'm going to give you a little preview of things to come in today's lecture. Um, but... Once again, I want to emphasize the accounting equation. Let me write it here up on the screen for you. Uh, and if I'm ever writing and you can't see it, please let me know. Okay, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. I will abbreviate here, okay? Now that always, 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 always has to stay in balance, okay? What we're going to do today, and you'll see this, is we're going to start analyzing business transactions and seeing how it affects that accounting equation. Let me give you an example. Looking back at this, let's say that a company got a loan from a bank for $5,000. Let's say that a company got a loan from a bank for $5,000. Well, how would this be affected? Well, cash, which is an asset, would go up by 5,000, right? And what else would go up by 5,000? Your liabilities, correct? You went into the bank, they loaned you $5,000. When you are done with them, you're going to have $5,000 more, $5,000 more of cash, which is an asset, but you're also going to have a liability of $5,000, right? Okay? Does that accounting equation stay in balance? It does, right? If it was in balance before, it is still in balance because we added $5,000 to each side. Okay? 
Now let's say with that new money, let's say we purchased a, uh, a $1,000 photocopy machine, piece of equipment, okay? Well, how would that affect this uh, accounting equation? Well, our cash, which is an asset, would go down by 1,000. Is that correct? What else would change? Not an expense because it's a fixed asset. It's a piece of equipment. And our equipment would actually go up by $1,000. Okay? So one asset, our cash, goes down by 1000 Think about that. You, left, you gave them $1,000, so you have $1,000 less cash than when you went to the store. But you also have this new big piece of equipment. Cash goes down, equipment goes up. You with me? Looking back at that, does it everything stay in balance? Is the accounting equation still in balance? We didn't do anything on this side, but the net effect was zero over here, right? Everything stays in balance. That's a little preview of what we're going to talk about today. Okay? But before we do, I want to go to a slide here. And the slide is right here. There are certain principles and assumptions of accounting. And all the rules of accounting are kind of based on these principles and assumptions. Okay? Now, we're not going to go through those all today, but we are going to go through the revenue recognition principle. The revenue recognition principle. Okay? What is the revenue recognition principle? Well, that states that we're going to recognize revenue when it is earned. When is it earned? When the product or service has been delivered to the customer. Now, I have a little cash sign with a cross through it because it is not necessitated by when the cash changes hands. We recognize revenue when it is earned. When is it earned? When we, provide, when we have provided the product or service. Let me go through a little demonstration on this. This is such an important principle that I want to make sure I really get it into your brains. Okay? Jessica, let's say you're my customer, and let's say I am going to sell you one of these nifty red calculators. Okay? And the price for one of these calculators is $5. Okay? So let's just make the transaction. You have $5 right there. Let's just make the transaction. Let's get a good side shot <laughs> from the other camera. Okay? I want to get a good side shot. Okay. I've given you the product. I can recognize $5 of revenue. Okay? Pretty easy. But now we're going to change it up a little bit. All right? We're going to change it up a little bit. All right? Let's keep with that side shot. Okay. Let's say... Jessica says, hey, I really need a calculator. I hear you sell these really great $5 calculators. And I said, oh, they're wonderful. She says, I want to buy one. And I say, doggone it, I didn't bring them today. And she says, well, i tell you what. I'm going to give you the, the $5, right? And I go, yeah. She goes, I'm going to give you the $5 today, and can you just bring it to me on Monday? I said, no problem. So she gives me the $5. Now, can I recognize this as revenue? No, I cannot. Now, this strikes some people as odd. She's a customer. I'm a business. She just gave me $5, and I cannot recognize that as revenue because it is not yet earned. I haven't given her the calculator. So she gives me $5, and the way I actually record this on my books is as unearned revenue, which is a liability. Because what do I owe her? I either owe her her money back or calculator. Right? Okay, so going back to that example, she gives me the $5, okay? The weekend comes and goes. I say, hey, it's Monday. I got that calculator for you, Jessica. She goes, great, I can't wait to get it, okay? So hold your hand out like this. Okay, I still have not earned the revenue. I have not earned the revenue. I have now earned the revenue. It does not necessitate when the cat, cash is not the impetus for when we recognize revenue. It's all when I give you that calculator. Cool? Okay, let's do one more of these. 
I put that $5 in my pocket and I lost it in there. Okay, one more of this. Let's rewind and start the whole thing over. Okay? She says, hey, I want to buy one of those calculators from you. And I said, oh, they're great. You're going to really like them. They're $5. And she says, I tell you what, I don't have the money right now for it. She goes, can I just pay you the money on Monday? And I say, that's no problem. She goes, I really need it today for the rest of my classes. Okay? So, I go ahead and give you the calculator. I have earned the revenue. Now, has she paid me for it? No. It doesn't matter. I can recognize the revenue because it is earned. I have given her the product or service. I now have on my books what is called an account receivable. I have a receivable from Jessica because I'm going to receive cash in the future. But I can and will recognize that as revenue. Okay? Very important. Okay, the weekend comes and goes. It's Monday. I say, hey, how's that calculator going? She says, it may be the best calculator I've ever had in my whole life. And I say, do you have the $5 you owe me? And she says, yes. Okay, so she gives me the $5. Do I recognize this as revenue? No. I've already recognized it as revenue. Re you see what I'm saying? I don't recognize revenue again. I recognized it when I gave her the product or the service. So all I do at this point is my receivable goes down, my cash goes up. There's no revenue recognized when she pays me. The revenue is all predicated on when I give you the product or the service. And this could happen the same way. If I were a landscaper and I was mowing your lawn for $50, I would recognize the revenue as soon as I was done mowing your lawn, regardless of when you paid me for it. Okay? There are certain companies and businesses that are known for you pay cash before you receive the service. For instance, how many people drive a car? Most of you? I hope you all have car insurance, right? You have to prepay your car insurance, right? Well, the insurance company gets all this money in, but they have not provided the service of insurance coverage yet, have they? So let's say you pay uh, $1,200, Jessica, for six months of auto insurance. Okay? Well, they get that $1,200. That's unearned revenue, correct? Every month that they provide you coverage, they can recognize $200 of that, right? Because they've provided that service. Does that make sense? Other companies that usually have money before they provide the product or service. A magazine subscription. Let's say you pay $24 for 12 issues of Reader's Digest magazine. Well, they have the money, but they haven't provided the product yet, have they? Every month that they send out that wonderful magazine, they can recognize some of that as revenue. The last example would be like a rock concert. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, I paid money to go to a Bruce Springsteen concert here in town. Did you pay for that too? You know where this sad, this sad story is going, don't you? I was so excited to see Bruce Springsteen. And if you're watching Bruce, you really let me down. Okay? <laughs> but anyway, I showed up to the concert and it was canceled. Now, I got my money back because Bruce and the E Street Band had not provided me a product or a service, right? Think of all that money that Bruce got in. Was it earned? No. When is it earned? As soon as he's done with the concert. Does that make sense? So one last time. We recognize revenue when it is earned. When is it earned? When the product or service has been provided. Okay? Cool. All right. So now what I want to do is go back to this accounting equation. Okay. Now there is the basic accounting equation, correct? Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now from our quiz, the two things that caused equity to decrease were what? Withdrawals of assets uh, by the owner out of the business and expenses. Right? I want to expand this accounting equation and I want you to understand what we're doing here. Equity is decreased by expenses and owner withdrawals, right? 
So let me get my pointer going here. So as these things increase, as these things increase, equity actually decreases because they're subtracted. Does that make sense? As withdrawals increase, owner's equity decreases because it's subtracted. As expenses increase, owner's equity decreases because expenses are subtracted. Revenues and investments by the owner into the business, which we keep track of in the capital account, as those increase, owner's equity increases. But I want you to be aware of these minus signs here, because for those items, when they increase, owner's equity decreases. Does that make sense? All right, good. Now what I want to do is something real important, and it is going to be, you can come off that for a second, we are going to analyze some transactions here, and this is one of those first skills that I want you to master. You need to master this before we go on to the next skill, which we'll learn in chapter two, okay? So this is real important, okay? If you have to rewatch this section a time or two, that's fine, but I want you to have this down. We're going to analyze transactions. Going to the screen, we know that the accounting equation must, must, must remain in balance after every transaction that we analyze. Okay? So let's walk through a few of these. Where does this start? Okay, starts right here. Let's say that Jay Scott invests $20,000 cash to start the business. Maybe it was an inheritance from his grandpa or something. But he has $20,000 and he is going to start a business. Well, from your quiz, you know that this is one of those things that increases owner's equity, right? And owner's equity and capital, we kind of use those interchangeably at this point. But the two accounts that are going to be affected are cash is going to go up and owner's capital or owner's equity goes up. You with me? The capital account is where we keep track of that investment. Okay? You with me? So cash goes up by 20000 and owner's capital goes up by 20000 Now, how does that look if you look at it like this? Well, you have cash over here to your left going up by 20000 and you have owner's capital, which is part of equity, going up by 20000 Does the accounting equation stay in balance? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay? And this is a brand new business, so this is the very first transaction of the business. Let's look at another transaction. Let's say they purchased office supplies and they paid $1,000 cash. Well, what would be the accounts that are affected? Well, cash would go down, right? And supplies would go up. Now, supplies are things like are shown. Binders, post-it pads, staples, pencils, stuff like that. But so, think about it. You go to Office Depot with $1,000 cash. When you leave, your cash is decreased, but your office supplies have increased, both by $1,000, correct? How does that look in this analysis? Well, cash goes down, and those, those parentheses mean negative, or going, going down. Cash goes down by 1,000, and supplies goes up by 1,000. Are you with me? Now, sometimes people think something has to happen on each side of the equal sign, okay? The left side and the right side, no. Something, nothing happened over on the right side of this equation. Nothing happened over here, did it? It is all over here. It's all on the left side. But that has a zero net effect. So the accounting equation stays in balance, doesn't it? Understand what we're doing? Does the accounting equation remain in balance? Yes. Let's look at another transaction. This time we purchased equipment. Equipment is not just post-it notes and pencils, but it's something big like this big expensive photocopier. We purchased equipment for $15,000 cash. Okay, the first question you ask is what are the accounts affected? Well, cash goes down by 15,000. 
and your account called equipment has just gone up by 15,000, right? Those are both assets once again. Now supplies aren't the same thing as equipment, okay? So when we look at it in this analysis, this is how it's going to look. Your cash has decreased by $15,000 and your equipment has increased by $15,000. Okay, Marlon? Since the owner owns the business, when he puts that uh, copy machine into the business, why wouldn't owner's equity go up as well since... That's a great question. Let me, let me reiterate that question. What he's saying is since the owner owns the business and this asset is going into the business, why doesn't that increase his equity? It's a great question because it seems to contradict our quiz. I'll tell you why. Look back at the screen. It's the business, the business's cash that purchased the equipment. Think about it. When he put this cash in, his owner's capital increased. He can't just use that cash to keep buying assets and keep running up his equity. You see what I'm saying? So in a way, the owner did not buy, personally, that photocopy machine. It was the business that bought it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Excellent question, though. Excellent question. Okay? All right, number four. Let's look at another transaction. This time the owner purchased supplies of $200 of and equipment of $1,000 on account. And I said the owner, but I really meant the business. The business purchased supplies of $200 and equipment of $1,000 on account. What does it mean on account? Sometimes that's called on credit. That means we're just going to pay you later. We're going to take the assets and we'll pay you later. Okay? They trust us. So what accounts are affected? Well, think about it. Supplies are going to go up by $200. Equipment is going to go up by $1,000. And our liability, which is called accounts payable. Accounts payable is going to go up by how much? $1,200. Correct? How does that look? Well, let's take a look. Supplies goes up by 200. Equipment goes up by 1,000. And accounts payable goes up by 1,200. Sometimes people make the mistake they think accounts payable goes down or it's a negative. No, accounts payable goes up, right? We owed them zero. Now we owe them 1,200. How are you going to make that accounts payable go down in the future? Well, how do you make your, your loans go down? You pay them off, right? So take a look at that. Supplies goes up by 200, equipment goes up by 1,000, accounts payable goes up by $1,200. You with me? Yes. Is accounts payable considered the liability or equity? Good question. Accounts payable is a liability. Okay? Accounts payable is a liability. As a matter of fact, going back to the screen, if I have my pointer here, the liabilities are over here, the equity is over here. Okay? Now take a look at that again. I want to introduce a concept to you called what is known as dual entry accounting. What that means is that every transaction has to affect at least two accounts. Otherwise, you can't stay in balance, right? So every one of these transactions, these first four that we've analyzed, at least two accounts were affected. Now, in transaction number four, there were three accounts affected. That's fine. Dual, account, dual entry accounting just states that at least two accounts are affected. I've done transactions where it's affected 50 or 60 accounts. Okay? But in order for the accounting equation to remain in balance, at least two accounts have to be affected. Now, let me ask you this. Is the accounting equation still equal? It is, isn't it? And at any given point, you can figure up, and I'll circle this, you can figure up what the ending balances are just by adding what's above. And you can figure this all out and verify that assets truly does equal liabilities plus equity.
You with me? Cool. Questions? We're going to analyze four more transactions. Let's say we borrowed $4,000 from Bank of America, okay? So, what would be affected here? Well, cash would go up by $4,000, and a certain liability would go up by $4,000, but it wouldn't be accounts payable. This would be note payable. Now, what's the difference between notes payable and accounts payable? Notes payable are more formal. They're written down on a note, and there's usually interest involved. Accounts payable is just like when uh, you buy some office supplies and you say, hey, I'll pay you at the end of the month. And they say, okay, you've, you've shopped here for 15 years. We know you're good for it, okay? But a note payable, how many here have a student loan? Anybody here have student loans? Anybody here have a car loan? Anybody here have a mortgage? Well, if you have any of those, you had to sign stuff and they gave you an interest rate. Those were notes. Okay? So going back to this example, we got a $4,000 loan from Bank of America. Cash goes up by $4,000 and our notes payable liability goes up by $4,000. How is that reflected in this analysis? Just as is shown. Notes payable goes up by $4,000 and cash goes up by $4,000. Does the accounting equation hold? Do assets still equal liabilities plus owner's equity? Yes. Next one. And it reiterates that in this slide right here. Now let's look at some transactions involving revenues, expenses, and withdrawals. And I really want you to recall the quiz that you took. What are the two things that make owner's equity increase? What are the two things that make owner's equity decrease? So remember that. Okay, we provide consulting services and we receive $3,000 in cash, okay? So we have a customer, we provide consulting services to him or her, and they pay us immediately $3,000 cash. What is affected? Cash is affected, and yes, this will increase equity, but it increases equity because revenue is increased. Does that make sense? So the way that this looks is like this. Revenue here, where's my pointer? Whoops, up here. Revenue is an equity account, right? When revenues goes up from your quiz, that's one of the things that increases equity. And that's why these are added, okay? So revenue goes up by 3,000 and also our cash goes up by 3,000. You with me? Accounting equation still holds, doesn't it? Assets still equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay? Somebody's working on something here in the building. All right, let's take a look at the next transaction. We paid salaries of $800 to employees. Now, what is this? This is an expense. Now I want you to remember, expenses are one of the things that as they increase, owner's equity decreases, right? Okay, so how does this look? Whoops. Cash goes down, because we paid out $800 to our employees, and our salary, salaries expense went up, okay? Salaries expense went up. Now remember that as salary expense account increases, equity decreases because expenses reduce equity. How does this look? It looks like this. And I want to make sure you understand this. Expenses go up. Expenses are not decreased here. Expenses go up. But eventually when we're figuring out total equity, we add revenue, but we're going to subtract our expenses. Does that make sense, guys? So when you have an expense, yes, your expense goes up, which causes your total equity to go down. I want you to understand that. Understand? Does, uh, does the accounting equation hold? Stay put? Yeah. Good. Let's do one more. A withdrawal of $500 is made by the owner. This is a similar situation. 
Cash goes down by $500. Withdrawals goes up. But as withdrawal account, which is where we keep track of these things when the owner takes out assets, when the withdrawal accounts goes up, equity decreases because from your quiz, withdrawals is one of the things that causes equity to go down. Okay? So how does this look? Well, it looks like this. Your withdrawals actually go up. However, when you figure total equity, you're going to subtract owner's withdrawals, you're going to subtract expenses, you're going to add revenues, and of course capital is going to be added. So if you take that 20,000 plus 3,000, that's 23, minus 500, minus 800. Uh, oh, and then you have to add your liabilities. That's where they get that. So this number is all of these together. Okay? But if I wanted to figure out my total equity, I add owner's capital, I subtract withdrawals, I add revenue, I subtract expenses. Do you understand that? Because withdrawals decrease equity. Okay, any questions on that? Any questions on that? Okay, what I want to do now, real quick, is I want to work on a homework uh, example in class. I want you to do exercise 113. Exercise, not quick study. Always listen if I'm saying quick study or exercise a problem. But I want you to do exercise 113 on the top of page 35. Okay? For you folks at home, whenever we do this, they're going to play this snazzy, jazzy JCCC music. I want you to do this at home just like if you were here in class. Okay? If you need more time, just pause it, and we'll go over the answer in a little bit. But this can be very valuable for time for you. So let's take a few minutes, and we'll do exercise 113.
Okay, once again, for you folks at home, if you're not done, just pause it and start it when you are done. But I want to make sure we get to the answers here before class is over. Okay, exercise 113. They want us to describe what was the probable nature of each transaction. In transaction A, cash went down by 2,000 and land went up by 2,000. So what happened there? They took $2,000 cash and purchased some land, correct? So cash went down, the land asset went up. Everything remains in balance, correct? Transaction B, office supplies went up by 500, accounts payable went up by 500. What happened there? We purchased $500 worth of office supplies on credit or on account, sometimes we say. Transaction C, accounts receivable went up by $950 and revenues went up by $950. Well, we provided $950 worth of services to our customers, but they're going to pay us later. We provided it on credit or on account. It's account receivable because we're going to receive cash in the future. And we can recognize that revenue because of the revenue recognition principle even though we haven't received the cash because we provided the service. Transaction D, cash goes down by 500 and accounts payable goes down by 500. What happened there? We paid off that liability, right? Our cash has decreased and our accounts payable liability has also decreased. Cool? Lastly, transaction E, remember how we had an account receivable for $950? Here the customer paid us. They paid us cash of $950 to settle that account receivable. We don't recognize revenue. Nothing happens in the revenue column, right? Because we've already recognized the revenue. But cash goes up, which is an asset. Accounts receivable, which is also an asset, goes down. Make sense? I want you to get very adept at analyzing these, and most of your homework will have to do with this sort of analysis. Okay? Are there any questions? Examples of when it does go out of balance? It can't go out of balance. If, it, if, if, you, if you try to make a journal entry or you, you try to analyze a transaction, it has to balance. If it doesn't balance, you goofed up. That's the beauty of it. The we're like goofed up in your math, is that what you're saying? You, you goofed up in your math or you didn't analyze the transaction correctly. The beautiful thing about accounting is it's precise. It has to be in balance. If you do something and it's not in balance, then somewhere you went wrong. Maybe you affected the wrong account or maybe the wrong direction. Okay? Alright, let me give you your homework. Not talking connect assignments, let me give you your homework. Your homework is right here on the screen, and I want you to do exercises 112, 110, 111, and 118. Now, when I have them out of order like that, what I usually mean is I want you to do them in the order that I wrote them. I think it'll be easier to do them in that order. Okay? Of course, you can do them whatever order you want. Now, I have a note down here that says use your work papers if you have them. See that exercise 111 that I have as homework up there, guys? Look in your work papers and you're going to find something that looks like this, exercise 111. And we're going to do, just like the, the transaction analysis we did in class, we're going to do it here, okay? Make sense? So don't forget about those work papers if you, went to the, if you purchased them. That's why you purchased them. So just look in the back, look for the right reference, and use that as kind of a template to do your homework. But have this homework done next time. Get signed up for your uh, Connect assignments. If you haven't, call the 800 number if you're having trouble. We'll see you next time. Bye.